This is the Steinberg CC121 integrated controller. It's a hardware surface controller for Cubase. There are lots of DAW hardware controllers, but this one's made specifically for Cubase. It's made by Steinberg, the makers of Cubase, which only makes sense. I posted an unboxing video of this unit some time ago, and I had several people ask me to create a second video showing exactly what it does and how it works. So this is that video. I'll go over the various controls on the unit and show exactly what they do. The most obvious control on the CC121 is the gain slider on the left side. Sliding the control up and down will adjust the corresponding slider inside of Cubase for the currently selected channel. Conversely, moving the slider inside of Cubase will also move the motorized slider on the control surface. We'll start by creating a, a track inside Cubase. We'll start by moving to the channel to which I want to record. We'll do that by pressing the channel select buttons. As I press it, you'll see the highlighted channel moves and the volume slider will change depending on what the current volume is set for that individual channel. I'm going to record to this channel. You'll notice that the record enable light is illuminated and I'm going to hit record on the transport controls. Okay, so now you can see I've recorded this MIDI track on my Hydrosynth. Now that I've recorded this track, let's have a look at the controls involved in working with it. I can mute this track with a mute button. I can solo that track out. I can tell the track to act upon read automation that might be written to the track. I can also arm it for write automation to the track. I can turn the track on and off for the control room. Obviously our record arm is right there. If the track has an editor associated with it, pressing this will open up that editor or the settings for that channel. And if the track has an associated editor, such as this Modix Connect track here, pressing this button will open up that editor. You've already seen the channel select. There's one other thing the channel select can do, and that's if you push both of the buttons at the same time, it will open up and show any automation. Pressing it again will close it. And if you have it opened for multiple tracks, if you push and hold them and for more than half a second, it will close all the automation for all the tracks. In fact, it closes all the folders as well. All right, let's add some markers in here. Now the transport controls here can help you navigate between those markers simply by pushing left and right. And if there are no markers remaining, it takes you to the very beginning of the track. The inner transport controls let you scroll anywhere within the project. The bottom row are the actual transport controls. Repeat or loop on or off, stop, play, and record. Let's bounce this down into an audio track. We'll go to the Hydrosynth audio track. It's armed to record, and we'll go ahead and record from the MIDI track that I recorded just a moment ago. Okay, so now that we've recorded the audio from the Hydrosynth, let's go back up to that track and we will mute that track so we don't want that playing anymore because now we've got the audio. So we can play back the audio. Now we wanna do some editing on this, so let's, let's do some EQ. Let's open up the equalization panel and we can turn on band one by pressing the one button. What type of equalization curve do we want on this? We can change the EQ type simply by activating that button and then twisting one of these knobs. And you can see it changes the various different types 
that we're going to have a, a high pass filter on this one here. So we'll select that. And now we have our bandwidth on the top, Q, F is a center frequency, and then G is gain. So as you can see, we can change the frequency where we want it. We can see how much gain we're going to put and also the bandwidth. And the bandwidth we can probably see better on, on something that's not a bandpass. Let's go ahead, number three here. We'll uh, move the frequency over a bit, bump the gain up, and then if I adjust the, the Q or the bandwidth, you can see how it adjusts the, uh, the decibel curve there on, on that equalization. Now, it's easy to bypass all of these because you can simply turn all the equalization for a channel on or off simply by pressing the all bypass, which lets you really, which gives you a really good way of listening to what you've actually done in the equalization. Let's have a listen to that. As you can see, we have a low pass filter in there that's really cutting out all that low end when we activate the, the EQ. There's something else the equalization section can do that has nothing to do with equalization. To enter the special mode, we press both EQ type and all bypass at the same time. When we do that, this starts flashing EQ type. Now, what we gain access to is direct access to our quick controls and our send levels. When the EQ type is flashing, we're working with one through four, and if all bypass is flashing, we're working through five through eight. So let's start with looking at our quick controls. Let's set up define some quick controls in here. So let's say uh, this one's going to be mute and then this one is going to be uh, an input filter that's a who knows wait, whatever whatever we're going to set these to. Uh, standard panner. Okay so we've got some quick controls in here which I can now directly modify simply by twisting these. So I'm turning this on and off. I can pan my left and right. So whatever important controls that you want to set up for this individual track in the quick control section you have direct access to with these dials right here. Similarly for sends, if we set up some sends, so I'm going to put up a send, let's see, we'll send to the synth bus in, in slot one, slot two we'll send it to the bass bus, and let's see, slot five we're going to send it to the vocal bus, which obviously are totally stupid but uh, just for an example here so now we have one two three and four so if I adjust here it's gonna send adjust the amount that I'm sending on the send one and send two and then if I switch over to all bypass here instead of one two three four I have five six seven eight so to adjust five I'll just twist this knob right here so that's a really neat way of getting access direct physical access to the controls on that track without having to use a mouse or, or anything, simply by twisting the dials. And to get out of this mode, we simply press these two buttons again together. All right, now we have a few more controls over the right side. All of these controls at the top here are all assignable. We can make them do different things. You can go into the CC121 setup uh, application to define what they want to do. Um, by default, and I leave, I've left mine at, at the default because I, I kind of like how it works, this is the click track volume and that's really nice so i'm going to mute out this track and then we're going to play it and i'm going to turn on the click track simply as it's playing by pressing this button and now i can actually adjust the volume of the click track just by twisting it which is a really nice feature These four buttons can be assigned to anything you want, but by default, and what I left them at, because I find them very useful, one and two change the zoom level horizontally, and three and four do the same thing vertically. It's a really great way of quickly changing the amount of information you have in there without having to go in and adjust scroll bars, which I find really tough to do because they're kind of tiny. And lastly, the amazing AI knob. The AI knob is a really kind of a special knob because it works unlike any other DAW controller in that whatever the mouse is pointing to, you twist the knob and it adjusts it. So you don't have to click the mouse, you just move the mouse where you want to adjust it, twist that knob, and it adjusts the value. And it works for anything you point it at. You point it at a slider, 
It'll adjust that slider. If you point it at, uh, I don't know, panning, it'll adjust the pan. And what's nice is that if you point it at something and then you press the lock button, enable lock mode, now it's locked to that control. So even if the mouse moves away, I can still modify that value. The jog button does exactly what you think it would do. It turns it into a jog mode. So if I go over to uh, play something here and I can enable jog mode, I can actually zip around inside my track simply by twisting that knob. Well, that's a quick overview of the CC121. I hope it gives you an idea of just what it does. If you like what you saw here, and you want to see more stuff like this about synthesizers and music and what have you, go ahead and click subscribe below. And while you're at it, click on that little bell just to get notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks for watching.